Hello and welcome to this video on amylases. The naming system for sugars was previously covered, but the details and implications of alpha and beta sugars were not discussed beyond why they are so named. Alpha and beta sugars are part of the larger topic of isomers. The hydroxyl group on glucose switches position which dictates the designation of alpha or beta. A relatively minor change in the chemical formula's depiction has significant implications for the final product. These two configurations are important for brewers. The largest group of brewers to benefit are those who make beer. This is because mashing and other brewing processes ingredients and tools help to make sugars more accessible, fermentable, or degrade into useful carbohydrates. To begin, let's examine amylases. Amylases are a group of enzymes that break down starch. Specifically, the starch chain called rather obviously an amylase and a mylopectin. Starch is the primary energy source from plants and is made from alpha glucose. When it is made from beta glucose, it is called cellulose and plant fiber is formed. Useful in diets but not brewing. These two versions are made by changing a single small part of the glucose molecule. Starch chains like those in barley, wheat, or rye are not a pure chain of glucose, but made from two variations called amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is a straight chain, but only makes up a relatively small 17 to 24% of the total. The remainder is made from the highly branched amylopectin. The first can be fermented eventually, as yeast consumes it in a linear fashion. The other needs to be broken up, as the amylopectin is too complex, and yeast cannot gain access to each of the individual chains freely. Most starches are not broken up by heat alone, and it requires coaxing. This is why Either chain is largely insoluble in water. The process of boiling water with starch chains in it does two things. The first occurs at 60 degrees centigrade for things like barley and malt. This is called gelatinization, which makes the starch chain soluble with water. The other is a gradual process that occurs over the boiling process and continues until the enzymes no longer function. This is making the environment more hospitable to the amylase enzymes and is something called step mashing. The process of both making the barley usable and accessing the sugars are done by two different amylases. One alpha that works on the amylopectin or readily fermentable substrate. The other is beta amylases, and they focus on the starch chains that hold everything together. Both are needed. One makes everything usable, while the other makes everything accessible. The enzyme beta amylase is very specific. It begins at one end of the carbohydrate chain and begins to break it down into maltose units. Alpha amylase is more like a shotgun and will hit anywhere in any one of the chains and break them down into smaller units. Beta amylase is the important variable to consider when brewing as this will define how fermentable the sugar you have added is. This is because it turns starch into maltose, whereas the other only makes the starch chains available. 
this is one reason why you nearly always add malt to beer. Other than providing a flavour profile, malt makes its own enzymes as part of the malting process. As has been previously described, the barley seed must be partially kickstarted into growth and then suddenly halted. This process results in production of enzymes needed and these are produced but not put into full effect. Then, when the growth is stopped suddenly, the enzymes are effectively stored in the malt. When making your wash, the enzymes are added, as well as any sugar, from your malt and act as an extra dose for the breakdown of malt, barley and other starches. The alpha amylase used in mash largely comes from malt, or, in some cases, artificially generated enzymes. The levels of alpha amylase will nearly always be high in a pale ale because of this. The high use of pale malt means a high volume of enzyme activity, whereas darkly roasted malts lose most of their enzymes due to heat degradation. There is an important part to that. Enzymes have specific temperatures and pH ranges at which they are active and will continue to work, as long as they remain functionally fed and in a functionally fit environment. Alpha amylase is very different to that of beta. Alpha amylase works best around 70 degrees centigrade. Beta amylase works between 60 and 65 degrees centigrade. This is important to know when you are trying to warm up and then boil your mash. One will work better at a lower temperature and, depending on what you've been using as your ingredients, you may need to hold that temperature for a time. Then you need to consider the pH. Alpha amylase works between 5.3 and 5.7 whereas the beta works better between 5.1 and 5.3. You could attempt to aim for a sweet spot at roughly 5.3 for both. However, your wash will naturally shift the pH that varies over the process of heating it up, with the release of different enzymes and other ingredients into the wash. These two amylases will generally restrict both the degree of alcohol and what you put into your wash to start with. Your ability to use certain ingredients and have them fermented by yeast is primarily limited by these two enzymes. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting or useful, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.